The streetcar hit a cow one day, knocked all the little milk squirts off the cow, they say. One milk squirt landed in an old maid's hand. She said, God, they've killed a motor man. <laughs> yes, here we are at the Bang Bang Club. So come right in, sit right down, and join the rest of the suckers. I mean, uh, <laughs> the customers. Yeah, come right in. We're glad you brought your beautiful wife. No, not your wife, huh? Your sweetheart. Well, we don't care whose wife it is. Come in, sit down. We all do a little lighthouse keeping here every now and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I hope the boss did it. Boy, what a chick you got with you there. Woo! You picked up you picked up more tramps than the Salvation Army. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope the boss doesn't hear me throwing out these lines. Of course, the boss can hear what I'm saying. No, he's downstairs now putting water in the whiskey, you know. <laughs> you, you're laughing. You think that's a joke. <laughs> this whiskey is cut so bad, the glasses are bleeding. They have band-aids there on the bottle. If, if, if you drink scotch and water, just order scotch. The water comes included. I, I feel I must introduce, I must introduce the band. The boys sitting before here, they, they, they're not really interested in an introduction. They don't want to be introduced because they are of Russian extraction, you see. And being of Russian extraction, they naturally feel that this will, uh, will uh, legislate against them or militate against them. I've told them that, uh, well, talent is of no consequence insofar as national origin is concerned. This uh, band leader here, yeah, yeah, the stupid looking one. He is of the Rashkashnovich family of Russia. Yeah, I'm sure you must have heard of the famous Rashkashnovich, the great musical genius of Russia. Uh, however, they've been here for a while and they've They've Americanized themselves and shortened their names, and they're known simply now as the Vich family. The Vich family. Yeah, I know all of them. I know Mama Vich, I know Papa Vich, and this is the son of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you get the message, huh? I see. I, I, I don't mean. No, no, you see, I don't mean that I just know the immediate family. I know all of them, all of the cousins. Truthfully, I know every bitch in New York that's worth knowing. <laughs> you, <laughs> you should see, you should see his little sister. Oh, she's a cute little bow-legged bitch, just as cute as she could be. You should, I took her out a couple of times. And, and his, his aunt, oh, his aunt is an evil old bitch. You can't get along with that old bitch too much. And this son of a, uh, well, this fella here <laughs> is going to lose his job. Sure, he's too arrogant here. You know, uh, hospitality is the keynote of our atmosphere. And a woman walked up and asked him for a request, and he refused it. She walked up very politely and tapped him on the shoulder, said, uh, my good man, you're the saxophonist, aren't you? He said, yes, ma'am, I'm the saxophonist. Why? She said, well, I didn't mean any harm. I just want to know, can I get you to blow the man I love? He said, no, 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 no. That, he said, that, 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 that's right. That's really a piano solo, piano solo. Hey, listen, let me tell you, while I'm telling you about the club, we have a dancer here. I don't particularly like to introduce this dancer because, you see, she goes and tells the boss if I don't give her a proper introduction. And the boss believes her. He humors her. He sits her on his lap and pets her. Now you can see we're not making any money here. They're not making a nickel. The man has troubles of his own. Why he continues to listen to her, I don't know. But he pets her and she cries. She sits on his lap and bawls all evening. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I feel that this makes it, this makes it much harder for him because his business is going in the hole at the same time, you understand. 
I, I, I do. I do want to recommend the food. The food is very good. I particularly prefer chicken. Oh, I love chicken, you know. He, the chef fixes a few pieces of chicken for me in this uh, aluminized paper, you know, and I take it home and I put it on the little coffee table by my, by my bed. When I wake up in the morning to watch the television programs, I have chicken there. I nibble on this chicken while I'm watching the television. Any morning, you'll find me right there in my bed, a breast in my mouth and a leg in each hand. <laughs> Chicken. Well, what part of the chicken do you eat? The leg and the breast are the best parts. Gee, how can you look so clean and laugh so dirty? And might I suggest that you have some of our excellent beverages here? We have good drinks. We have a drink over here that's mixed with uh, vodka and orange juice. It's called a screwdriver. We have another mixed with vodka and prune juice. That's a pile drive. <laughs> it, it has more has more vodka in it, you see. Twice as many. That's right. And um, we have another drink here, especially good for those of you who had to uh, have uh, timid young girls with you. It's called a blockbuster with a cherry. <laughs> blockbuster with a cherry. That's right. You give it to your girl, walk a block, and bust. I'm telling you, it's the most unusual drink. <laughs> so, men, I say to you, beware. Beware. There is a tremendous political upheaval in Washington, and it's due to the unrest of the feminine ranks. I was in Washington and I attended what they call the annual conclave of the Women's Voters League. They had this convention hall filled with women and they had a speaker. Sister Full Bosom Hawkins was her name. She spoke and you should have heard some of the dastardly innovations that they are planning to inaugurate with the forthcoming election. She said, girls, the domineering male contingent of our group presents us with a problem. And this problem, she said, which stands before us now, is a stiff one indeed. She said, but if we are willing to face it and will but use our heads a little we will have it licked in no time at all. <laughs> she said, we, we were very foolish to allow the men to penetrate our organization in the first place. Because now, she said, that they have gotten in, they are trying to drive they are trying to shove a dictatorship upon us. <laughs> she said they are driving every control out of the organization. She said, and I for one, if you will pardon the expression, no longer have the stomach to submit to this humility. She said, now, why are the men allowed to do all of the laying of plans for our organization? She said, it is because of the vote. And we have allowed them to get a firm grip on the polls. <laughs> she said, girls, I feel that the men have had the polls in their hands long enough. <laughs> she said, it is about time that we were allowed to guide things, so to speak. She said, now we do not mind working under the men and looking up to them because they have been over us for a long time. <laughs> she said, but, uh, but, uh, 
we can no longer allow the men to hold us down. We must make some motions of our own. She said, now we have proved ourselves to the men, have we not? She said, nothing they have gotten up has been too hard for us to handle. She said, no load they have placed upon us has been so heavy that we have not lifted it time and time again. She said, when they have called for action, we have been the first to come. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. She said, we have come, and we have come gladly, and we will come again if the occasion demands. She said, at this moment, if anything should arise that will fill our aspirations, we would be on hand, and we are willing to lend the full weight of our entire body to any good movement. <laughs> That's what she said. She did indeed. She said, but we, we have been poked in the gallery too long. She said, I think it is about time that we assumed our natural position on the floor. She said, now, we cannot act too quickly. She said, because you know that if we start friction at the very beginning, the men will pull out before we make a move. <laughs> Now, we do not wish them to become angry and leave us in disgust. No, we don't. She said, but we must organize. She said, as long as we are split the way we are, the men will be on top. <laughs> she said, she said, now they think that because they are the pants of the organization, and we are merely the skirts of the organization, that they must remain forever superior. She said, but I say, down with the pants, up with the skirts, and on with the good work. There is a village island near England that's known as the Isle of Man. Now, there are no planes there, no trains, no automobiles. In fact, all modern transportation is banned. But everyone on the island owns a donkey, or what's commonly known as an ass. There are asses of every description on man, ordinary asses, and asses with class. Now, for example, the mayor has an ass that nobody ever looks at. But with his wife, ah, that's another affair. For she has one of the most intriguing asses to be found on the island. <laughs> now, on Saturday, the whole town goes to the marketplace and they take no heed of the weather. And whether it rains or the sun shows its face, the rich and the poor put their asses together. <laughs> and of all the sights you may live to see, in the air, on the sea, or the land, there are few spectacles so remarkable as those asses, the asses on man. <laughs> For well, there is the butcher, Mr. Green, with his big reddish ass. And the tailor, his ass is smooth and brown. Then there's Farmer Sneed, who runs the feed store. 
naturally has the fattest, best fed ass in town. <laughs> and then that there is um there's old Miser Mose with his little gray ass. And the banker with the rich ass to make you proud. And the thin chap from London with the odd looking ass. You could spot his ass anywhere in the crowd. <laughs> Don't overlook the miller's daughter. She has a young, frisky ass that always seems to be scampering about. And frequently, you will hear her little brother yell, Hey, sis, the gate is open and your ass is out. <laughs> There's the old maid, the old maid who lives by the river. I believe that she is called Madame Dud. She rides back and forth there through the shallow stream, and her ass is all covered with mud. <laughs> On Sunday, the whole village goes to the mass, and each one must clean and brush his ass. In the meadow, the boys ride the little girls' asses, and this delights the little lasses. And whether they ride for a long time or not depends upon what time the mass is. Now, one Sunday, the preacher, Reverend Herman, had a meeting immediately following the sermon. He tied his ass near the window outside. He had a handsome ass, and he patted it with pride. The sun beamed down on the steeple spire and the whole church burst into fire. The whole congregation dashed out in a mass, each one running to save his own ass. <laughs> yes, sir. Reverend Herman jumped out of the window and on his ass he thought he would land. But he fell in a hole and he said, bless my soul as he lay there all covered with sand. Now the moral of this story is easily found. Reverend Herman did not know his ass uh, would not be there if he left. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, very clear, huh? uh, A little obscure. Now we live here in America, a grand and a prosperous nation. But suppose that we had donkeys as our only transportation. We would still need friendship and brotherhood, and to live in peace would be swell. Let us not have war, for the hydrogen bomb will blow everybody's ass to hell. I know, I know what you, what you think you see. You think that all you see before you is a bunch of musicians, right? Oh no, you are now looking at the Rod and Gun Club. The, uh, well, no, we, we, we uh, used to do considerable fishing and hunting, but our rods got in such bad shape <laughs> that we just call it the Hunt Club now. We go out, we hunt ducks, we hunt rabbits, we have a great time. But every member of the hunt club has some physical maladjustment. Now, you see the band leader? He stutters when he talks. Duh, 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 duh. See the, the, the drummer? St. Vitus dance. You see him. You watch it. We were going duck hunting the other day. We walked up to the drugstore. We walked in. The uh, band leader, being the president of the club, spoke up. He said, say, 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 hey, Mr. Druggers. He said, gig, yeah, gig, yeah, gig, yeah, gig. Yeah. Give me some sh shotgun shells. Well, now, shotgun shells are, are not often sold in the drugstore, so while he's scrounging around the druggist looking for the shotgun shells, a young lady walked in with the prescription she wanted filled. The druggist said, you'll have to wait, madam. They, these men are next, and I'm trying to find these shotgun shells. But being a gentleman, the band leader spoke right up. He said, oh, duh, 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 don't make no difference. He said, go, 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 go on and wait on them. She said, well, thank you, my good man, for being so kind. You come to my house tonight. We're having an unusual dinner. And I think you might enjoy it. He said, well, while, while, what you uh, uh, serving at your dinner, lady? She said, we're serving Boston 
baked beans. He said, no, no, lady. He said, I da, 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 don't, don't ever eat ba, 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 beans. He said, because every ta, 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 time I eat ba, ba, beans, they, 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 they make me far, 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 forget what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. She said, oh, I understand. It disturbs your digestion and you can't think clearly. All right. She said, come up to the house and sit around with the daily papers. Just make yourself at home with us. We have papers from New York, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Detroit. Maybe you'll find your hometown paper. He said, no, no, lady. He said, I t t t tell you the truth. He said, I'm al 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 allergic to paper. He said, I don't, don't, don't use pa paper, but, but for, for one, one occasion. He said, I don't, don't never use paper to, to, till I get through sh sh shaving and then I wrap my blades in paper. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, that, 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 that's a good precautionary measure. Said, but come up and meet some of the girls. Oh, we have a host of beautiful girls that we play canasta, we play scrabble, we play bridge. Come up and just meet a bunch of the girls. Maybe you'll find a girl you'd like to make your sweetheart or even your wife. He said, no, no, lady. He said, don't, don't, don't ever bother around with girls. He said, because every t -t -t time I p -p play with one of them, she, she, she think I'm trying to f f f fool her or something, you know? <laughs> he, he, he said, I, I l l learn, learn my lesson when, when, when I was the down, down, down on the farm. He said that there was a girl that li li lived in the ne next farm to me. She 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 was a cute, cute little girl. You used to put up, up, put up vegetables on my wagon and we 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 would ride to, to town together. He said one one day day we were going go to town and and, and the, the the load was too much for the old horse. He said about cause about about half, halfway to town we got, got got in the middle of a hill and the wagon judge jer jerked the old horse and the old horse judge jer jerked the old wagon. And then let me tell you, but, but, but that little old girl in the next farm, she 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 had some of the best old p -p -p potatoes on that wagon that, that you've ever seen. That the potatoes were, 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 were loaded so heavily they jer jer jerked the old horse, and the, the old horse let 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 one one of the biggest. He let one one of the roundest, one one of the juiciest tur 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 turnips fall off of that wagon that you. Well, all right, I'll go. I'll go quiet. That's all right. We, we, thank you. We, we have a civic obligation, or rather a civic opportunity, presented to us, which we are very happy to embrace. We have been submitted a list of books and authors from the Book of the Month Club. We are to disseminate this list of uh, books and authors to you with the assumption that uh, better reading will uh, add or rather lend to more altruistic living habits. I'll give you the list of the books and the authors, and if you spot your particular author or if you hear a title that you like, you write in to us and we'll send you the books. The first book is called Sailor Beware by Don Bendova. <laughs> Don, I know Don very well, a very, very wonderful writer. The Open Kimono by Seymour Harry. Yeah, that's right, Seymour Harry. You know him? Fine fellow, fine fellow. Here's one, The Protruding Pajama Leg by Lotta Dix. Lotta, Lotta has, yeah, don't be afraid, go right ahead. Here is The Yellow Stream by I.P. Daly. Mm-hmm. Here is By a Waterfall by U.P. Standing. You know Mr. Standing? We have now an adventure novel. It's called The Wild Cat's Revenge by Claude Ball. Claude is a very wonderful writer. He writes the Jungle Gym series, too. Here is some Oriental literature. The Brown Spot on the China Wall by Hu Flong Dong. Yeah. Here is the um, the ruptured Japanese by Wan Hong Lo, and the flip dizzy Hawaiian by Laka Nuki. This next book is written by a man who does considerable writing for Hollywood films. I've seen his name in the editing of several pictures. Here's a book 
The Bride's First Night by Peter B. Kine. Mr. K-Y, K-Y-N-E, Peter Kine. Marvelous writer. Scenario writer, you know. Here's a book for young people. It's called Blood on the Picnic Ground by Buster Cherry. I, yeah, I know Buster. I know Buster. He's people on the cherry. I don't know how to sing people or not. Now, here is a book by a Russian author. I do not wish to create the impression that we have communistic sympathies. We do not. But here is a great talent, and we must not overlook it. The book is called The Sex Mad Russian by Ivan Tor Titsov. Titsov. Mr. Titsov, a great writer. Here's a book, The Anxious Moment by R.U. Cummins. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, doggone. And uh, here's another, The Old Fashioned Way by Eileen Back. Yeah, I know Eileen. Eileen Back. Well, here's a barnyard novel. It's called The Rooster's Mistake by Rhoda Duck. Rhoda Duck. I knew Rhoda when she was only in kindergarten. Now, this author doesn't list his whole name, just his last name. Hmm, very, oh, well, he calls himself Mr. The book is called Rip. In the Mattress by Mr. Completely. I, what is this? Oh, I guess it's John Completely or Bob Completely or some of the ordinary names. This, this next author has five syllables in his last name. He's Russian. It's called The Terrible Tragedy of the Russian Lover by Hoyudan Kachukakov. Kachukakov. Hoyudan Kachukakov. Yeah. And uh, here is The Self-Made Man or The Great Hancock by Peter Long. The 69th Romance by D.R. French. And an English novel, Back to Back by Will E. Turner. The next book is written by uh, Edwin Small's nephew. It's a book called The Disappointed Old Maid by Dickie Small. <laughs> and here is a novel written by the Pulley Brothers. The Pulley Brothers collaborated on this book. It's called Love Thine Own Self by O.E. Pulley and Howie Pulley. Uh huh. Here, vacation in France by Hugo Downey. That's Martin Downey's cousin. Well, it may not be the same thing. Here is Paris. I give my life to thee by Ben Eaton. That's Bob Eaton's brother. Here is the great rubber failure by Ivor Child. Uh, I have a child. Well, here her, her books are back on the stand. Huh? The German's Favorite Spot by Herr Bottom. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Ideal Husband by John Henry Everhard. How to Reduce How How to Reduce a Fat Woman by Ryder Moore. Writer, I knew him very well. Used to be in the in the Hollywood in the uh, cowboy movies. Oh well, there are a great number of books here. We can't list them all for you, but um, here is a book called uh, Birth Control by Iona Syringe. You may know. You, you know Iona? Oh, she's quite a girl, Iona. And um, here's one uh, for office workers. It's called uh, Dangerous Days by Pastor Period. I know. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you'd better not bother to write in. Just call in. We have a special arrangement with the telephone company where there are three, you get this, three exchanges. There's the South Exchange, the Parkway Exchange, and the Operator's Dial. If you want the South Exchange, you just put your finger in the S hole, see, and you dial around. That's right. S is for South. You get the South. <laughs> That's the idea. It's very simple. And if you want, now, let's see how closely you're following me. If you want the Parkway Exchange, you, that's right, put your finger in the P hole. See, dial around. That's right. P is for Parkway. And if you're confused, if you're not quite certain which exchange you want, then put your finger 
at in the operator's hole and you dial back and forth with the that's right. That's right. Uh, the operator will come and she'll give you your number. But don't go off before the operator comes. You see, she's not always at the switchboard. The phone number, the phone number is Cherry I 812. And there is an extension, Cherry U832. Confucius say, young girl who go to young man apartment for midnight snack, off time get nothing but tidbit. <laughs> Confucius say, man who make love in Central Park find peace on earth. <laughs> Confucius say, man who make love to widow have peace without bloodshed. <laughs> Confucius say, stupid man cut down cherry tree, smart man spread the limbs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> you're vicious, you're vicious, you are. I was telling the Confucius jokes a moment ago, just ribbing the Chinese fellow who works there in the kitchen, you know. He's from Canton, China. And if you're familiar with Asiatic culture, you know that the Cantonese have always been synonymous with the very ultimate in Eastern cuisine. Now, he's not only a gourmet, but he is a civic leader. Oh, yes, very much so. He... <laughs> He's nothing like the fellow who comes down to uh, pick up the laundry where I live. Yeah, you see, the, the uh, landlady called him the other day, said, Wing, said, you got to get down here in a hurry. The laundry's all dirty. The linen is dirty. The tablecloths are dirty. The napkins are dirty. You got to get here, wash them, dry them, and get them back this evening. That means you got to hurry. You understand? He said, oh, yes, Missy, me understand. She hung up the phone. What'd she hear? She said, my goodness, I wonder who that is. She went and opened the door, and there he was. She said, my, my, you must, he, how did you get her in such a hurry? So you, I got to give you credit. You're efficient. She said, you really came lickety split, didn't you? He said, uh, what you say, Missy? I said, uh, you really came lickety split, didn't you? He said, oh, no, me no come lickety split. Me come for the laundry. <laughs> As I, was, as I started to tell you rather a moment ago, our chef, he's in charge of the Teenage Girls Club. The Teenage Girl Clubs. He works with the Police Athletic League here. And he's in charge of the Teenage Girl Club. Now, his name is Fu Kam Yang. <laughs> Fu Kam Yang, that's his name. Fu Kam Yang, your name sounds funny to him. That's his name, Fu Kam Yang. And, and not only that, his grandfather is interested in young people. His grandfather is 87 years old and is married to a girl only 13. Her name is Too Young, Too Calm. <laughs> too Young, Too Calm. That's her name, Too Young, Too Calm. And, and, and the old man, the old man is 87 years old. He's 87. Yeah. His name is uh, No More Can Calm. No More Can Calm. And they got a cute little baby. Little baby's name is How Come You Come. <laughs> I, I made a big mistake. I think I offended him the other day. Yeah, I did a very stupid thing. I walked in. I, I said, hey. I said, uh, Fook. I said, Fook. I said, is it true what they say about Chinese girls? He said, well, man, that depends on how you look at it. <laughs> 